This part of the course is population genetics. So unlike previous parts of the course where we did this with PowerPoint, we'll be doing this kind of live and with uh, pen and paper, because I find that's a better way to teach the mathematical topics in this part of the course. So first off, we want to think about what our definition of evolution is. So earlier in the course, um, or if we read the book, we had um, descent with modification as one of our definitions, or change in the characteristics of a population over time. And if you look in your book, these definitions are listed in the appendix or in the appropriate parts of the book. A third definition, and actually the definition that you may have gotten when you took 211 or something like that, is it's the change in allele frequencies in a population over time. So all three of these definitions are used. This is the more kind of traditional ones and then since the modern synthesis we've actually been using this definition more. Um, this definition is kind of incomplete though because one of the things that um, this is missing is it's missing um, epigenetics. So epigenetics are factors that are inherited from generation to generation um, from parent to offspring and even to uh, multiple generations after that, but they're not in um, the DNA, they're not technically alleles, and so although the traits may change, the allele frequencies are not changing. So this definition change in allele frequencies, which is the definition we'll be using in this part of the course, um, is missing epigenetics. It's also missing um, learned behavior. So whereas the first two definitions would have covered learned behaviors, so maybe animals that teach things to one another or cultural aspects of populations, the first two definitions include this. Our change in allele frequencies definition does not include this. And the reason I mention this is just to keep in mind that this definition, although it's the one that we're going to be using in this part of the course, it's an incomplete definition and doesn't necessarily cover every single thing. Okay, so now that we've kind of gotten our definition of evolution out of the way, we'll be focusing on this one in this part of the course. So this is population genetics. So what we'll be doing is we'll be thinking about the alleles that we've been talking about earlier in the course. So we're going to start by thinking about one locus with two alleles, which we're going to represent with capital A and with lowercase a and capital A, lowercase a. And just to remind kind of how things work, um, go back to um, when you first learned about genetics. If you have a heterozygous individual here mating with a heterozygous individual here, what sorts of offspring can they produce? Well, if this heterozygote makes two different types of gametes, and this heterozygote makes two different types of gametes, then the possible offspring they produce, they can produce this homozygote there, they can produce this heterozygote, this heterozygote, this homozygote. And you've seen this before. This is the Punnett square that you've worked with before. I mean, maybe you actually even made a square out of this back when we were doing this. And the thing to think about here is if these two individuals mate and they have a large number of offspring, what are the frequencies of each of these genotypes that we would expect to see in the next generation. Well, the frequency of the capital A homozygote is 1 out of 4. The frequency of the heterozygote is 2 out of 4. So that's a quarter plus a quarter. Gives us a half, which is 50%. And then the frequency of the lowercase a homozygote is also one quarter. So if we have a mating between two individuals and we're thinking about the gametes in that um, particular pairing and think about the frequencies of the genotypes that are produced, um, we use these equations to make that prediction. Now what we're going to be doing in this part of the course is we're going to be thinking about at the population level instead of kind of thinking about two individuals mating. At the population level we'll be thinking about the frequencies of these genotypes. And when we're thinking about the frequencies of these genotypes, we're going to be using 
the frequencies of each of these alleles in the population to predict the frequencies of these genotypes. And we're going to represent the frequency of this capital A allele with the letter P, the frequency of this lowercase a allele with the letter Q. And because there's only two possible alleles, the frequencies of these two alleles have to add up to all the alleles in the population. So that means this number P plus the number Q, because they're frequencies and represent percentages, they're going to add up to one. And this is our first kind of mathematical result that we can keep in mind, that P plus Q equals one. And you may remember that from Biology 211, or if you took a genetics course, it's one of the first results for thinking about population genetics. So thinking about our population, what we're going to do is we're going to um, assume a population that is what's called panmictic. So a panmictic population is one where every individual can mate with every other individual. And so, for example, there's no geographic barriers that prevent some individuals from reaching other individuals. So in theory, any individual can mate with any other individual in our panmictic population. So we're going to be thinking about our alleles in this panmictic population. And we're going to be thinking about the population kind of as a big group that are mixing their alleles together. So if we're thinking about these alleles combining with these alleles, how often are we getting the result in genotypes here? Well, it's going to depend on how common or how frequent those alleles are. And we already have a number to represent how frequent these alleles are. That's our P and our Q. Remember, these are frequencies, so they're between 0 and 1. So how often would we have this gamete combined with this gamete to make the homozygote there? It would be P proportion of the time, right? because P out of 1 matings um, pr provide this gamete. And then P out of 1 times it'll be combined with this allele, so P squared will be the frequency of matings that are going to result in this capital A homozygote. How often is this capital A going to combine with lowercase a? Well, frequency P and then times Q. How often is this lowercase a here going to combine with a capital A there? Also P times Q. And then how often will the two lowercase a alleles combine to make those lowercase a homozygous individuals, Q times Q, which is Q squared. So if we think about the frequency of the genotypes that will be produced in this panmictic population with frequency P of capital A alleles and frequency Q of lowercase a alleles, the frequency of the capital A individuals will be P squared. The frequency of the heterozygotes will be 2 P Q. And then the frequency of the lowercase a homozygotes will be q squared. And you've also seen this before. And then if we think about it, all those genotypes, these are their frequencies, they have to also add up to 1 um, because there are no other genotypes in the population. That gives us the result that p squared plus 2pq plus q squared adds up to 1. And that's our second kind of major equation to keep track of that will allow us to do, to do population genetics um, questions. So these two results can be used to do questions um, along the lines of the following example. Imagine we had a population and we knew that the frequency of the capital A allele was percent, right, 0 0.6. Um, we could ask ourselves, what are the frequencies of each of these genotypes in this population. So the frequency of this capital A, capital A homozygous individual was P squared. And we know that P is 0 0.6. So this frequency is just going to be 0 0.6 squared is 0 0.36. So 36% of the individuals in the population we would expect to be this homozygote. Now to get this heterozygote, this would be 2PQ, which means we need to know what Q is. But we don't have Q, we only have P. 
but we know that p plus q equals 1. So we could rearrange this to solve for q. q is 1 minus p, 1 minus 0 0.6, which is 0 0.4. So for here, the frequency of this heterozygote is 2 times p times q. When you multiply this out, this is 0.24 times another 2, you would get 0 0.48. So 48% of the population are heterozygous. And then thinking about the frequency of this homozygote, that would be q squared, which was this, 0 0.4 squared, 0 0.16. So 16% of the population are these homozygous individuals. Now we could have also solved by using this relationship here. If we know this is 36% and this is 48%, we could subtract each of them from 1, and we would also get that result of 16%. Now we can elaborate on this question by thinking about how many individuals are there of each genotype if we have a population of a given size. So let's move this up and let's think about if we have a population of 300 individuals, how many individuals are of each of these genotypes? Well, we know the frequency here with 36%. So this would actually be 0.36 times 300 gives us 108. The frequency of this genotype, 48% times the 300 gives us 144. And then the frequency of this genotype, 16% times 300 gives us 48. So if we have an allele frequency and we have a panmictic population, we can, by using um, the result from here with the frequencies of each of the genotypes, we can predict the frequencies of each of the genotypes. And if we have a population size, we can then predict the number of individuals with each of those genotypes. And these are the calculations you'll be doing in some of your very first homework questions.